All right, let's have a spooky encounter here and work on a witchy version of myself. So I'm going to walk through just how to spooky up this picture. We're not going to take it off its background or do anything like that. We're just simply going to take the existing picture and try to make it spooky. Um, one of those techniques is going to be to darken everything, to make our eyes look spookier, to transform our face a little bit using some liquify tools, uh, and to change the color of our skin. So let's hop right to it. First off, I'm going to start with the liquefaction process. So under filter, there's one called liquify. It's a lot of fun to use, but it is destructive to a picture. So your best option would be to turn this into a smart filter. Um, and in order to do that, this layer has to be a smart object layer. So I'm going to right click my background and convert to smart object so that then I can do all of these things to it. I suggest doing this early on because later on we're going to change the color and all that. And if this is already done, it makes it a lot easier. So this is our main background. I'm going to zoom up a little bit here just so I can see this better. Under Filter and Liquify, if we click on that, there are some really cool features um, that we have where we can use Face Aware Liquify. And um, if you click on this little button here, the Face tool, it's going to put kind of a line, like it automatically detects your face. It's pretty smart, too, if you're the only person in the picture. And it'll set the boundaries of your face, where your eyes are, your nose. You can actually use those buttons or you can use these sliders. So you have two options here. So I can come here and like point to my nose and I can pull it down to make the nose lower or I can lift it up. So you've got nose height here or I can come over here and click on it and I've got buttons to do that as well. Same thing for the width. You can do it manually here or you can come over here and do it. So you can use the buttons whichever way you want to. Um, I will say that it, it keeps them within a very specific like parameter set, and that's basically so it doesn't mess up your pixels. There are some tools in Liquify which are going to smear, for lack of a better word, pixels. And I'll show you that here in a minute because I want to do my nose that way. But, um, but if you can stick with these, they're going to be the most realistic. So again, you want to zoom up so you can see really good what's going on. Okay, so we took care of the nose. Let's go ahead and deal with the eyes. And again, if I want to click on here, all of these sliders are also changeable by using these buttons. So like that one here, modified my eye size. The so eye is bigger than the other one. Same situation here. I have one eye that's always bigger than the other one, by the way. Um, and then same thing here. You can make, the, um, make these smaller or bigger on your eye height. So I can make the eye height bigger or smaller. I'm just going to go ahead and leave those normal. Um, Eye width is going to adjust the width of the eye. And notice these are all separate. So you have a left eye and a right eye slider. So just to be goofy, I'm going to go ahead and make both of mine wider. Um, you can do the eye tilt, which has to do with kind of the angle. And uh, that's right here. So you can rotate that in or out or rotate these down. And here, if I grab a hold of it. There we go, like so. It's starting to look definitely creepier now. Um, you can even do the eye distance, which is how far apart they are from each other. So if you want to bring that in, you can start to look kind of like an alien, really, the more you go on these. Uh, I also think this one's fun, too, because you can pull the shape of your face in some. You know, I like to think that witches are scary, skinny beings, you know, so I'm going to go that. Uh, the mouth one is a really fun one because you can make it, like, smiley or not. So I'm already frowning, but I could try to bring this up to a creepy, happy witch, or I could go even further down and be angry. Uh, you can also modify your lips. Now, I don't have a lot of upper lips, so I can't go very far on that one. Um, but you can see if you've got some lip showing, you can increase that uh, mouth width, mouth height, and all of that. To have a bigger mouth or a smaller mouth. And then finally, you've got your forehead. We'll go ahead and make our witch have a taller forehead. You can raise your jawline or pull it in. Um, and the chin as well, so I can pull my chin down or make it skinny. I'm going to go down this time. Um, so anyway, you've got all those options. You can choose any of those. And those are all, they're, they're pretty realistic. You know, like there's not any smearing of pixels. Now, this next one, I'm zoomed up again, up here is forward warp. And you can use it, but it's going to kind of, it's going to smear, for lack of a better word. So it's not near as good, um, but you can use it. Uh, the reconstruct tool is kind of like an undo tool when you're using these. And then there's pucker and bloat. So like if I wanted to make my nose fatter, 
I could use the bloat tool to bloat it. And each time I click it, wherever I click, it's going to be bigger. Now, if I click and drag, see, it's going to start like moving stuff around. So you definitely don't want to do that. Your undo is still in there. Control Z or Control Alt Z if you need to multiple undo. All right, so there's that one. Or like I said, pucker would make something smaller. You wanted to make your nose even smaller, you know, or whatever. Again, overuse of these tools, if I click and hold, is going to go that route. That's too much. So Control Alt Z to back that up if needed. So I'm going to use forward warp to make my nose look a little bit longer. So you just kind of grab a hold of a little bit, let go, grab a hold of a little bit, let go. Don't go all at it at once or the pixels get really bad. Again, this is not going to look near as realistic as what we had before. See, if you're in here zoomed in, you can see we have some lines in there. Um, again, the reconstruct tool kind of almost is an undo a little bit. It puts it starts putting it back, which sometimes can be helpful to fix it a little bit. Um, and then there's the smooth tool, which helps to smooth things out a little bit. So if it put too much in the way of those pixels, if that's too far, you can try to smooth it. So anyway, so there's my purse. I'm going to hit OK. But before I do that, let's look at the previous. So here's my before face, and there's my after. So quite a bit different there. OK, I'm going to hit OK. And that takes care of that part. So isn't that fun? Uh, so that's the liquify tool. And again, it's a smart object with smart filter. So the other parts that we're going to do then are to modify the way the overall picture looks. Um, and if you want to add anything else additional to this, you could add it too and, and add that later on. But I'm going to go ahead right now and adjust, we'll say, the curves. Um, I'm going to pull these down. If you pull those down, we can make everything darker. It's kind of like doing a levels adjustment, but moving multiple sliders at once. Now, if you go the wrong way, it's going to look pretty bad. And if you go too far over, you know, that's just too far. But we do want to make the whole room look a little bit darker. You can add points in here. I don't suggest it because then it gets kind of a little bit, you know, out there. Um, so anyway, you can undo. There is an undo button in here. So you can reset the whole thing and just try again. All right. So there we go. I think that's good. That's kind of creepy. Um, you can also still pull in a black slider like a levels adjustment if you want to adjust simply the dark areas. So I'm going to pull that down and make it a little flatter. All right. Now the whole picture is overall much darker. All right, next I'm going to select the face and do a color adjustment. I find it best to click back on the main layer. Let's just name this main person because it's really important to remember that that's what that's doing. I would also make notes about what these are. This is like an overall darkness adjustment. So that way you remember what each thing is for. So I'm going to click back on my main person, use my quick selection tool, and just select the face and anywhere else that you've got skin. Now clearly my hair doesn't need to be that color, but for now I'm just going to leave it get up into that hairline just a little bit. If you select first, then whenever you go to add an adjustment layer, it will only add it to that area. Like your adjustment layer will be black and it will be white in that area. So I'm going to click Hue Saturation. You can see it's white in the face area. And then I can come through and pull these. So if I'm doing a witch and I want to be like a green Wicked Witch of the West or whatever, then I can go there and do that this way. Saturation would make it more green. We don't want to go crazy. Um, desaturation kind of goes this other way, which I kind of like, almost a concrete green kind of color. And you could darken or lighten, but I don't think those look as good because the whole face gets darker and lighter. But you could do a little bit. All right, so there's that. That's looking pretty fly. Now my hair is, is a problem, so I could go into this if I get really close up, and I could paint out in black any of those areas that don't need to have that color. What I would suggest doing, but you have to remember you've done it, is using a lower opacity on your brush. That's way up here. Because then your brush can't paint as fast, so it is a little more you know, see-through, a little easier to deal with. Sometimes you have to go over things multiple times, but it's a little easier to deal with. Now we're going to end up making the hair black and white anyway for this particular one, so it's not going to matter. But All right, so let's say we've got that, that that's good enough for now. That takes care of the skin. If you had hands exposed, you'd want to do your hands. If you get up here close to the hair line, you can see it's not great. So I would take a brush, a really soft brush with a low opacity, just because, again, it's a little easier to work with, and then work that around these edges just a little bit. And because it has a low opacity, you're not. it's going to take several passes for this to make a big difference, but that's going to look a lot more realistic. So i got to kind of keep going over it a bunch to make much of a difference. There we go. 
get into the hairline a little bit in there and so forth. Okay, so that's better. Um, and again, if there's areas you need to fix, same situation. Uh, you can go in there and get rid of that hue saturation if you went over too far in some area. Okay, <clears throat> so that takes care of the skin. So we've got the skin going on now. Um, you don't want your face, like the eye part and your mouth part of your face, to have that green color. We kind of want to bring back our normal color. Solid black and solid white are not affected by hue saturations, um, but the other ones are. So I'm just going to paint out. Again, you're going to paint in black. Paint out those areas. I don't think those were selected in the first place. But paint out those areas that maybe got the color that didn't need to. There we go. And if you get close to the eyes, the inside of the eyes, our eyes are really kind of red on the inside, and it looks creepy, much creepier when we get in there. See, there we go. That's better. Okay, so I've got that in there. Um, now we're going to do an overall adjustment to make everything black and white except basically your face. So what you could do here would be to pre-select, again, your face area. So back on the main person, kind of pre-select that face area a bit. Um, even in here where your, you know, skin is. And then we want the opposite of this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So I'll go black and white, but see the wrong thing turns black and white. So if I'm clicked on my adjustment layer and I press control and I, it inverts the selection. Now don't do that on the main person layer, but on the layer mask. There we go. Now it's opposite. So the head part is now in black, so it's being protected from that black and white. Now again, I'm going to have to touch this up because... There are some areas here that didn't get taken out. So I paint in black, and I've got my opacity turned down quite a bit still, but paint in black over these areas um, if you don't want them to be black and white. And again, you can pull that opacity back up if need be so that it paints a little quicker. That's not really going there. Let's see if we can get it to you. Oh, wait, I want to paint in white because I want that to be black and white. Sorry, wrong direction. There we go. All right, so we fix that up as best we can. And there may be a little bit of a color in there, but not too big of a deal. There we go. All right, so we've got that going on now. For the most part, this is, you know, essentially finished. We've done the face. We've done the overall levels. We've turned most of it in black and white. Um, you could add blood. You could add creatures, all that stuff. I still believe that I want to paint out some of this camp cabinet area a little bit. So I'm going to do another overall darkness, but I don't want it to affect me. So... I'm going to go ahead and add one more. I'm going to do a levels adjustment here. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pay any attention to me. I'm just going to look at the cabinets. And I'm just going to pull this down. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Now, see, that's really dark. And then on this layer, I'm going to take a black, really soft, really big brush. And I'm going to paint me back in so that I'm not, you know, super dark like all the rest of that. There we go. There we go. That's good times. And then you can add any props that you want. Like, you know, I've got a hat here, so I could bring this hat over um, and add it to my image. And if I need it to be bigger, you know, control T and, and do all that stuff. And this needs touched up. But you can see here, you can then um, make any normal changes that you would make under regular circumstances to the image to fix it up. And again, if you're doing something to any props that you bring in, at this point, now you're above everything, so you're going to have to add your own set of clipped in, clipping masked in things that are only going to affect your, um, you know, your picture here. So you can do all these adjustments straight within in here. And that would just go to the hat itself. It wouldn't be to every single layer because I've got it clipped into this layer. There we go. Okay, and this particular hat is not selected very well at all. This probably needs a, like an inner glow or an inner shadow, I guess would be a better term, to try to get rid of some of that uh, white that's going on around it, or I needed to do a better selection in the first place. That's not really helping a whole lot, but, but anyway, but you get the gist of it. So this is basically a, a nice, easy, quick way, that you can do it in about 10 minutes, to take yourself, make you look a little bit creepier, um, you know, some of my students are creating themselves to be demons or wizards or um, other kinds of creatures other than witches. So whatever you want to do, it's just a great way to practice using lots of adjustment layers.